but Charles Barkley helped pull out the victory with a tray in the final seconds. That is certainly an act worthy of a high quality. And now the adventures of Muggsy Bogues, first to steal, but then followed by the referee, a double dribble. Muggsy can't believe it, but Hugh Allen says, don't argue, I'm taller than you, and what are you doing for me? Now, the alley you normally requires a player to jump, unless the player is Manu Bogues. There are hazards of sitting in the front row. Ooh, excuse my foot, lady. Brad Davis, the last of the original Mavericks in his last season, hits the last second shot to win it. Davis got in close, got it at the buzzer, the Mavericks win! Thursday, Alton Lister with a little eye in it. Here's one for Vernon Maxwell's tape library, the block and the spin around pass, all in the same play. Oh, gets it up to Bakuku. Speaking of 360 degree spins, check out Gerald Wilkins. Oh, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, despite seconds to go, Harper. Cool under pressure, Derek Harper has made the big shots in the big games. But he still remembers how nervous he was in the 1980 McDonald's All-American High School basketball game. The site was Washington, D.C., Harper's first game outside his native Florida. For the first time, it was extremely scary. Thank God I had my mother there. She took the trip, and she, she takes a lot of pressure off of me naturally. Now, looking back a decade later... A quiet 24 tonight. Sixers up by two at the break. Second half, all Philadelphia. Percy Hawkins, the all-star with the steal. He did the dirty work. He gets to shoot it. 21 points for Hawkins. The Sixers win it on Wilt Chamberlain night. And a lot of points. I want you to think of as a guy who has a lot of friends. I'm going to count you guys all among them. Thank you very kindly. Dribble against he can do everything but shoot free throws, couldn't he? Anyway, the game started. Orlando and Philadelphia, and here we go. Rick Mahorn boards long outlet to Charlie Barkley for the big two-handed jab, and Philadelphia was up, but the game was close. Second quarter, sixes by three. Mark Akers comes up with a loose ball. Scott Skiles on the break to Dennis Scott. The three-point specialist hits the layup, of course, to cut the lead to one. Sixes by one at halftime. Fourth quarter. 77 to 69, the Sixers trying to pull away. Hawkins comes up with the steal, and he will take it all by himself. The one on everybody fast break, a 10-point Sixers lead. And then Charles Barkley showing the good defensive performance. Again, he scored 38 against the Boston Celtics in a losing cause Sunday. He goes in with a nice, what do you call that, a gunslinger movie? Kind of carried it on his hip for a minute and then got it to go. And the Sixers go on to win it by a final count of 99 to 91. The Sixers trying to stir. They had lost five of their previous eight games, but they get on the winning track tonight, Hannah. Five seasons. Tonight in Philadelphia, Detroit lost some scoring punch when Mark Aguirre didn't dress for the game, while Charles Barkley delivered the knockout blow not even Richard Steele could argue about. We head to the spectrum. Mark Aguirre, again, wearing the shades, has an eye injury. He's day-to-day. -day. Second quarter action, Charles Barkley draws a crowd, but would find the rookie Brian Oliver along the baseline. Nice move down low, and the 76ers up by 13 in the second. Well, the Pistons' defense... Always a constant for them. John Sally knocks it away. Dennis Rodman heads the other way. Gets it back from Joe Dumars for the reverse lay-in. And that lead is cut down to just one. Still the second quarter. Charles Barkley takes this one himself. And once he gets up ahead of steam, get out of the way. Charles with 32 points, 11 rebounds. 76ers by three at the half. But the Pistons do keep it close in the third. Joe Dumars finds Bill Lamb. And then over to Andre Turner, who drives and sinks the shot off glass. Only Newt's 14th assist of the season, so maybe he's been holding out. I don't know. Newt picks it up for some unknown reason, goes under the leg, and then early ball's getting kind of knocked around there. Bill Winnigan has it batted around by Akeem Olajuwon, and the Rockets on the break. Kenny Smith to a feet, Otis Thorpe for the jam, much to the delight, we think, of Evander Holyfield. Rockets by one, Vernon Maxwell drives baseline, dishes to Olajuwon for the jam. 41-38 Houston in the second quarter. Now Rockets by four at the half. On to the third quarter. Kenny Smith comes up with a steal, and the Rockets are looking for more and get it when Vernon Maxwell goes in for the slam. 59-52 Houston. Now watch the Rockets launch a 10-2 run. Maxwell to Olajuwon draws three defenders, then finds Otis Thorpe for the jam. Rockets in control and going on to win 98-87. Houston earning a franchise record 10th straight win. Otis Thorpe, 11 of his 28 in the final period. The Kings extend their road losing streak, the record losing streak, to 30 straight. Rockets clinch a playoff berth with the win.
Well, you know what? Even the upper crusters find the road to be a rather unforgiving place at times. Take the San Antonio Spurs, for example. Playing for the Midwest Division lead tonight, playing at an Orlando arena against a team which had dropped four straight and seven of its last nine, and wouldn't you know it, turn into a knife fight in a dark place, and San Antonio lost the contest. Mark Akers inside, blocked by David Robinson. And then watch Big Dave run the floor. Yeah, they break out. David Wingate in transition, but Robinson's the guy who puts the period at the end of the sentence, and the Spurs are up by nine. Magic turned up the defense a notch, though. Jerry Reynolds with the steal. Outraces the field. Slams at the other end. Magic by eight at the half. Rod Strickland, while well, he's back in action, works the pick and roll to perfection. Two-man game with the Admiral for another slam dunk. Tie game at 86. And then the Spurs get up by one when Robinson has his shot partially blocked by Mark Akers, who stayed home. The Magic breaks. Anderson, Scott Skiles, slam. Anderson with a huge game. And that put the Magic up. Magic up by three now. Ten seconds left. It's down to Cases. Elliott has his three-pointer block. And him says, hey, get over here. Sixers respond. Andre Turner, Percy Hawk. In... I tried it. In three, Philly down one. Spin by Jordan. Jordan had only 20, although many of them the emphatic variety. 90-89 Chicago. Biggest shot of the night. Jumper. Ron Anderson. Yes. 15 of his 20 points came in the fourth quarter. Bulls nine-game winning streak on ice. The Celtics fans in touch up, and whenever one gets the chance to see most valuable player candidates Charlie Barkley and Michael Jordan on the same floor, you got to buy a ticket. You got to go. It's going to be terrific. And here we go. First quarter, sixes by two. Jordan drives. Nice wraparound pass. Uh, through Manute Bowl to Bill Cartwright for the jam. They started off on a 19-2 run. Now second quarter, the Bulls by five. Barkley dealing from the double team. Horace Grant with a block to Barkley, who comes right back for the jam. Bulls by four at the halftime break. Third quarter, the Bulls by a dirty dozen. Percy Hawkins misfires the three, but Scottie Pippen is there to board and outlet to Jordan as they get into transition. Jam. And the Bulls are up 61-47. to Now late in the third, on the Bulls turnover, Craig Hodges cannot handle it. So Hawkins recovers and drives and lays it up. The Bulls' lead is starting to dwindle late in the fourth. Bulls by one when Ron Anderson, what a spark he was off the bench, comes off the Barkley pick, nails the jumper. Anderson with 15 points in the fourth quarter, and Philly wins at home by a final count of 95 to 90. The uh, Sixers are very circle. I'm relaxing the day. Got the day off. Riding down the Bahamas and gamble all day. Well, the incident happened late in the game when Barkley spit in the direction of a fan who was heckling him and inadvertently hit an eight-year-old girl instead. So uh, Charles was a scratch tonight in Charlotte when the Sixers took on Ho the Hornets, but uh, Barkley was there in cardboard cutout form anyway for the Hornets' mascots to abuse. <laughs> Hornets by two late third quarter when Del Curry, they swing it to him, he misses with four seconds left, but Kenny Gaddison, who did a big number on the boards all night, got the follow hook to fall. But the quarter's not over, and Philadelphia fires the long inbounds to Hersey Hawkins, and the dead-eye gunner goes over Muggsy Bogues to hit the fall, fall out of the bu uh, buzzer and make it a two-point game. And it was like that all down the stretch. Game tied when Gaddison drove the lane, got the bucket and the foul, and the Hornets, obviously benefiting from the absence of Charles Barkley, got strong play inside from JR and victory in Indiana. Sixers and Red Kevin, uh, Kenny Payne misses, but rookie Jason Williams comes roaring it over the top and sticks it back. And Mahorn, the spectator, is now super fan. Philly goes on its second quarter. Benji Anderson with a good D. Now it's a bang-bang turnover, and the pinball wizard who started things finishes them. Ron Anderson, Sixers by a dozen at the half, but Indiana makes a third quarter run. Reggie Miller has time to walk off the distance here, and left alone, he buries the three, and the Pacers keep coming in the fourth. Miller gives and goes, and Detlef Schrempf finds him through the back door and slices the Sixers lead to two points. But Philadelphia bent but didn't break. Armand Gilliam created some room inside and got the tough hoop to cap a 22-point effort, while Ron Anderson hit a season-high 27, and the Sixers without Barkley and Mahorn won in Indiana.